welcome back to part 5 of the series in the last video we discussed how we can render these messages now let's discuss what we are going to build in this part so the first thing that we are going to implement is this emoji picker okay so i am going to show you how we can implement this emoji picker okay and also we are going to implement light and dark theme on emoji picker as well now you can see in dark mode its color has changed we are also going to discuss how we can make this a speed dial component okay which is going to allow us to send different kinds of messages we are also going to see how we can implement this menu on different types of messages as you can see we are going to provide different options to the user for every message and the next thing that we are going to build is pretty interesting we are going to show the user's contact information when anyone clicks on the user's name or its avatar okay so as you can see on the right hand side we have the this contact information and i can toggle this window on and off okay that means i can open this or close this so for this we are going to use redux store so i'll also explain you how to set up redux and how to dispatch actions so if that sounds interesting then make sure to watch this video till the end i also want to request you to please make sure to subscribe to this channel as this is going to motivate me and also support me to build this channel and if you find the information provided in this video informative then please make sure to hit the like button and also leave your comment so let's now start building this application okay so let's now see how we can implement emoji pickup so to implement this feature we are going to use a package known as emoji mart which you can find on npmjs.com okay so we are going to just implement this package into our app let's now see how we can do this so the first thing that we need to do is we need to navigate inside the components directory there you can find conversation and inside that we have our footer component so we want to implement this on the smiley icon that we put together in the previous part so when we click on this smiley icon button then we want that emoji picker to appear on our screen okay so for that what i'm going to do first of all i'm going to separate this style input component into a separate component so i'm going to cut this we'll write here chat input that's the name that we are going to provide to our component so let's build that right here const const chat input is equal to this is going to be a functional component so let's return this csx now let's use this component so here we are just going to simply write it like this now what we are going to do we are going to actually create a stack okay and then inside this we are going to wrap this chat input component now we have done this because we have wrapped our chat input component into a stack because we want to group it with this picker component okay so let's now also implement that picker component here so as you can see in the documentation of emoji mart we can just import it from the library okay and then we can use it simply inside our component so i'm going to do just that first we also need to install this package so i'm going to write npm i and the name of the package that is emoji mart now after we have installed this package we are going to use this picker component and we need to import these two things in our file data and picker so let's write it at the top of our file just like this then we can pass it the data prop as you can see here data prop and there is also going to be one more prop on emoji select so this on emoji select is going to give us the access to the event when we select any emoji from this picker now as we can see in the documentation of this emoji picker there is one more prop known as theme okay and there are three options that we can pass to it auto light or dark so the default mode is light we are going to make it dynamic so it changes with our theme so that's why i'm going to pass this theme prop here then we can just specify the theme mode using this theme from material ui then writing palette and then mode now after we save this you can see we get this as the result but this is exactly not what we want we want it to be floating okay inside the messages section so for that we are going to wrap this picker in a box okay and then we will position it so now we are going to 
provide it some styling so let's write sx which is coming from material ui then first of all we want it to be floating and appear at the top so we are going to give it a z index okay so this is actually a higher value we are providing this to make sure that it is visible at the top now the second thing that i am going to do we want its position to be fixed okay and in order for this position fix to work we also need to provide it some property like bottom and right or left and top okay so let's provide it bottom property so we want it to be floating but just above the input component okay so i'm going to give it a value of 81 that means 81 pixel and we also want it to be separated from the right side so i'm going to give it this value of 100 so that means it will be 81 pixels above the bottom and 100 pixels separated from the right let's now see what we get and now you can see we have much better result but there is just one thing that we need to fix as you can see this input is not taking its full width now so what we are going to do for that let's go back to this chat input okay so this is our component chat input you can see we have already provided full width prop that means it is going to take the full width whatever is available to it so that means we need to fix the width of its parent so what we are going to do we are going to style this a stack so we will give it width of 100 percent that means the total width available to it so that its children will also take up so now you can see that we have this emoji picker right here okay and it's looking much better now so the next thing that we want to do is we want to make the toggle functionality that means when i click on this emoji button then this emoji picker is going to appear or disappear okay so to achieve that we are going to manage a state in this footer component for that we can just use normal use the state hook provided by the react library so i'm just going to write open picker and set open picker then we can use then we can use use the state okay and initially the picker is not going to be open so i'm going to give it this value of false we can write it like this react.use state or we can just import it from the react library okay so the next step is going to be we need to hide this picker when this open picker is false so what we are going to do for that so we have a very simple solution available for that we can just provide a property known as display to this box which is wrapping this picker and now the value of this display is going to depend on whether this picker is open or not so if this picker is open that means this value is true then we are going to set the display value to inline otherwise it will be none that means this component this box component along with its children is not going to be rendered onto the screen when the value of open picker is false and that is exactly what we want let's save this and see now you can see that the picker is gone but the question remains how we are going to actually toggle this picker so that is actually simple we just need to pass this set open picker chat input component as a prop just like this then we can accept it okay in this chat input component let's destructure it set open picker and now we can say that whenever this smiley icon button is pressed okay that means it's clicked then we want to execute this function which is basically going to open the picker component emoji picker if i'm going to pass the value true then it is only going to open this picker not going to close it but we want the functionality in such a way that when i click on this and if it's not open then it will get open but right now as it's open and if i click on this emoji again then it should close so what we are going to do the correct way to do this will be we are going to set its value let's use the previous value whatever the previous value may be we are going to set it to opposite of that that means if the picker was open then it will get closed or if it was closed then it will get open let's save this and see what we get and now you can see that we are perfectly able to toggle this emoji picker and that's just fantastic i hope you are enjoying this so let's now see how we can implement that speed dial component that we just saw earlier in this video so to do that we definitely we are definitely going to need a list okay because we will be mapping over it so i have prepared this list already for you and i'm just going to copy and paste it here okay let me import these icons so now we have imported all of these icons from the phosphor react library let's now understand what each of these elements are 
doing for us so you can see we have a color property this is actually going to be the background color for each button then we have an icon okay which will be rendered in each button then we have a position in the y direction so this is basically going to be the separation between this icon toggle button and the buttons that will be rendered or floating here in this messages section okay then we also have a title this will be used to display the tooltip okay which will contain this text for each of these icon buttons since we need to render this with this link simple icon button okay so what we are going to do we are going to first wrap these things this input adornment okay along with this icon button inside a stack now we also need to provide some styling to it so we just need to specify its width and we are going to restrict it to max content okay let me correct it then what we are going to do we are going to again use another stack because we want all of our icon buttons that will be floating here to be aligned properly in a column okay so we are going to use this stack component again from material UI. then let's just provide it some styling so the first property is going to be position which will be relative because its children are going to be absolutely positioned okay then we are going to provide a property for of display but i will discuss it later okay so let's now move on and render those icons onto our screen so i am using this actions array or this list that we just defined above and i am going to map over it okay i'll get each element from this list then we can return some jsx so here i am going to use a special component which is again provided by material ui and it's known as fab okay so this is basically the floating action button and we need just this in our app so let's copy this code from here and we are going to implement it in our app so first of all we are going to need this fab component from material ui okay inside this we can pass any icon that we want to render we have our icon in this el okay so i'm just going to say el dot icon right then let's provide it some styling and remove these props so the first thing that i'm going to give it is position absolute then we need to specify its position from the top and this top position is going to be negative of el dot y that means whatever the y value we provided here it's negative is going to be its distance from the top okay and we are doing it just to position all of these buttons okay now the next property is going to be the background color and as you can see we have provided each element with its own background color so i'm just going to use that el dot color let's save this and see what we get so now you can see we have these fab icon buttons here and these are looking pretty nice to me now there is one more thing there is no description for each of these so we are again going to take help of another mui component which is known as tooltip let's see what this is going to do for us as you can see in this example when i am hovering over this icon button there is this delete description which is appearing so we can wrap any component with this tooltip and provide it with a title that will be displayed when we hover over that element okay so we are just going to do exactly that so for each fab button that we render we are also going to wrap it with this tooltip component from material ui let's put this fab inside tooltip now we are going to format this code and remember we need to provide it with the title prop okay so this title is going to come from the element which is el dot title so i'm just going to pass it down here let's save this and now you can see we got this tooltip but it is appearing at the wrong position that means it is appearing below the fab icon button so what we can do here if you go to the api section of the tooltip then you can find one prop which is known as placement let's see so you can see there is a prop known as placement which is available in this tooltip component so we can provide it various values like we can position it at the top top start top end and so on so we want our tooltip to be positioned at the right side so we are going to provide this placement prop here and then the value is going to be right one more tip if you want to ever know 
what props we can provide to a component then just click control plus space bar in case of mac or windows okay and you will be able to see what are the props available so you can see we have different props available that we can pass to it okay and as for the value for any prop you can again press control plus space bar and you will be able to see all the values that that are available for that given prop so let's just pass right save it and what changes we will find on the screen and now you can see that our tool tip or the description is now correctly placed at the right hand side and this is just amazing now let's also implement the functionality to toggle this so what we are going to do we are again going to maintain some state so for that we can write const open actions and set open actions so we can manage this state by using use state hook provided by the react library okay and initially this is going to be false that means these fav icon buttons won't be open by default okay so we have written it like this now what we want is that this stack shouldn't appear on the screen when the value of open actions is false so how we can hide it we are again going to use the display property here okay and this will be dependent upon the value of open actions so if open actions is true then it's going to be inline block okay otherwise the display is going to be none that means this element will not be rendered onto the screen so if we save this and go back to our app then we won't find this action buttons rendering on the screen because we have initialized the value of open actions with false so now you can see those action icon buttons are gone but the question remains how we can toggle this on and off so that is actually very simple what we really want is whenever we click on this link button then we want to toggle okay so you can see this is our link button so we can just use this on click prop here on icon button and we are going to pass it a function that we need to execute every time this icon button is pressed so what we really want to do is we want to take the previous value of open actions and then we are going to set its current value to be the opposite of the previous value that means if it was false then it will turn to true or vice versa let's save this and now you can see we are easily able to toggle this on and off and this is just amazing now we are able to view all the options for sending messages and also this emoji picker now let's also focus on how we can display various types of options for each message that means so there should be options button besides each message and when we click on that we should see various options so let's now build this okay so let's see how we can provide a options icon besides every message so what we are going to do we are first going to navigate to the components directory then inside that we have our conversation folder here we have different types of messages in this message types file okay that we created in the last part now what i'm going to do let's start with the text message we can just provide a settings or options icon right besides this box icon okay this is the box inside which the text message is displayed so let's use so let's use an icon which is provided by phosphor react library so we want three dots vertical icon okay so i'm going to use just that dots three vertical okay so this is an icon which is provided again by phosphor react library so let's write it here and now save this and we are going to see what we get on our screen and now you can see on every text message we have this dots three vertical icon and this is and this is just what we want we just need to increase its size just a little bit so i'm going to give it a size prop and we'll provide a value of 20 so that means its size will now be 20 pixels let's save this and see now it's looking much better but we also need to provide the menu functionality here that means if we click on it then we want to see a menu opening up and for this menu component we are actually going to use a component which is built right inside material ui so it's called it's called menu and let's see what we can achieve with this 
we are going to build a menu like this when we click on that icon we want to see we want to see a menu like this let's now explore the code that we have to write to achieve this result so to do this we just need this code that means we need to use this menu component okay provide it with some props okay just for opening closing okay and providing the anchor and then we can pass it some items that we want to display in the menu okay so this is pretty straightforward so let's just copy this and we are going to implement it in our code but first of all we are going to separate this into its own component okay so let's build a separate component here which is going to be used right inside this file so i am going to call it message options okay since this is going to be used to provide various options for each message so let's return some jsx so i am going to use react fragment cuz we will be returning two components basically this dot three vertical icon along with menu okay so this menu and also this dot three vertical icon let's leave a comment here okay and now this dot three vertical icon so the first thing that i'm going to do is to import menu and menu item which is available inside material ui so let's import it here first thing is menu and second is menu item okay and we also need to discuss one more thing i have already prepared this message options this is a list that will be used to render various options inside the menu okay so it's called message options and i have exported it from here so we are just going to use that menu list to display various items here so for that let's just use a stack here okay then we will be rendering all of them in a column all of the options inside a column and there will be some spacing between them so let's give it a spacing of 1 and padding from x direction that means from the left and right of one that means 8 pixels right then here we are going to write some javascript inside this jsx so i have used this curly brackets then we are going to use this message options which i just showed you okay then we can map over it pick each element and return some jsx so here we will be returning menu item component okay and inside this menu item we are going to display el dot title and we also need to provide it this prop on click so we will be actually writing some function in here so let's leave it like this for now now let's discuss what is this anchor element open and close so for this we need to again take a look at this mui example let me shift this to javascript and now you can see we have this state anchor element okay so currently it's set to null but when we are going to click on the icon then you can see we have this handle click and this handle click is going to receive the event and it's going to call this sent anchor element and it's going to pass a reference of this button in here okay to this anchor element that's how this menu is rendering like a like it's holding around this button okay so this is the role of this anchor and what is the purpose for this open this is basically going to tell us whether this menu should be open or closed i hope this this is clear now so let's copy this code and we are going to use it here let's now use this handle click okay and we are going to use it here and also here i made a typo here it should be the same thing so el and el let's save this and now we are just going to use this message options right here okay the place where we left a comment inside this text message component so let's use this and it's right inside this file so we don't need to import it from anywhere now we are going to save this and see what we get on our screen so now you can see on these text messages i have this options icon button but when i am clicking on it then nothing is happening and why is that because we have left one more thing so if you take a closer look at this button then you can tell that we have provided some props to it and the main thing is that we are providing this id and as you can see this id in button and the aria labeled by property of this menu list prop is exactly matching and this is the condition by which this menu will be able to identify like around which 
component it has to open okay so let's also get these props okay and we also need to implement those here and let me also explain the purpose of each of these so these are just for the accessibility purpose okay and this id is to match this dots three vertical with this menu okay then we have this on click which is going to fire this event handle click okay which is going to trigger this handle click let's save this and now see what we get so now as you can see when i am clicking on this icon then i am getting this menu and this is exactly what we needed but right now it is only appearing at the text messages so let's also do the same with other types of messages okay and this is just a simple job we just need to use this message options in every other message types okay so let's just copy it and then inside the outer stack we just need to use this message option in each of the messages that we created in the last video okay just like this so let's also provide it in this document message let's save this and now you can see we have this nice message options on every message that we are sharing okay and this is a very important feature to have now we can do the same menu thing over here on this avatar component okay because in every chat application we are going to show some options to the user after the user clicks on this avatar like editing profile or logging out okay so let's just also build that quickly okay so let's now see how we can implement this same menu okay here on this avatar component so for this first of all we need to navigate to the layouts folder inside source then go to dashboard and inside that you can find a file called sidebar and if you scroll down to the bottom then you will be able to see this avatar component and now we need the same functionality that we built for the message component like we have some component and when we are clicking on that component then we want a menu to be displayed okay so the first thing that i am going to do is to create a similar menu right beside this avatar component okay so let's also import this menu and menu item component in this file as well just like this we also need this array and here we will be using different data as you can see i have also created this profile menu inside the data that i have given in the starter project so we are going to render three options profile settings and logout so this is going to be logout let me correct it so we are going to have these three menu items in this menu so let's use this profile menu in the sidebar so i'm just going to replace this with profile menu then here we also have this title and now we also want this icon component so we will have to change this a little bit so we are going to wrap the title and icon inside a stack okay so let's use this stack component and put this title inside the stack so we will be wrapping this title in a span element okay this is just a plain html element okay a span and beside this i also want to render the icon component now i want to provide some props to this stack so the first thing is going to be width i want it to take 100 width okay that means 100 pixels and direction row because we want the title and icon to be displayed in a row then we need align items to be centered that means the line passing through the center of this title and the icon okay horizontally should coincide and then we also need justify content space between so i can place the title and the icon on extreme ends and this is it now we just need to define this handle click open anchor element and handle close just like we did here in the message types so let's just also copy this and i'm going to use it again here in this sidebar component okay so let's just paste it here and i have already explained it to you what is the purpose of anchor element and this open handle click and handle close so we are just going to provide some props to this avatar component as well so that 
we can link this basic button okay so we have to provide this id here so we can say basic button okay and it should match exactly like this and then just for the accessibility point of view we can also provide some extra props just like we provided here and the most important of all is this on click because this is what's going to trigger this click handler okay when we click on the avatar component so let's save this and now we are going to see what changes we get on our avatar component okay so let's see this and now when i'm clicking on the avatar component i can see this menu appearing and this is now looking much more like an app now there is just one more thing that i want to fix like when i'm clicking on it it is covering the avatar as well so material ui is actually providing us with a prop for the menu which is known as transform origin so you using that prop transform origin i can basically shift the origin of this menu okay so let's use this here so inside this menu component i'm going to give it this prop of transform origin okay and this is going to basically accept an object so i want to say like vertically the center should be at the bottom okay that means when we are opening it then the center it should be rotated around this corner okay like from the top it should be bottom in the vertical direction basically and in the horizontal direction i want the center to be at the left that means we are selecting this bottom left corner to be the transformed origin now along with that we also need to provide one more property which is known as anchor origin and what is this other property anchor origin let me explain it to you okay so we have specified the transform origin so that is for the menu that will be displayed but for this avatar like we want to start the center of that menu that means the bottom left corner at the bottom right corner of this avatar component okay so i am going to provide this anchor origin again with two values vertical and horizontal so vertically i want the menu to start at the bottom and horizontally with respect to this avatar component i want the menu to start at the right side i hope you get this concept so i am just going to write this so bottom right let's now save this and now you can see we achieved exactly what i explained to you and this is so cool now i am excited to also implement the redux store in the next part of this video and we will start working on various features like groups calling and this contact information along with many other cool features that we are going to implement in this chat application so there are going to be three to four more parts of the front end and then we will be shifting on the back end where we will be implementing all of the functionality by using node.js express mongodb socket io okay then also we will be using a third party api for audio and video calling so if you are excited about this application then please make sure to subscribe to this channel to receive the regular updates and also please press the like button on this video so that this may reach to many people like you i hope you enjoyed watching this video and i'll see you in the next one